Commissioners, I wanted to talk a little bit about the um, FY 2013-14 budget. Uh, it's a little bit early to give uh, any detailed uh, projections at this point, but uh, I would like everyone to know that uh, this year will still be challenging as it has been the past several years. Uh, optimistic about the future here in Cleveland County. Uh, currently, we're seeing uh, with our new projects and our expansion of our existing industry some, you know, some increase in our tax base, uh, but there have been other revenues that have continued to decrease or remain stagnant at the same time. Uh, I've mentioned before we need to uh, be aware of, of several capital projects, um, such as the upgrade upgrading of our 800 megahertz uh, communication system. Uh, electronic medical records in our health department that would be two significant capital funding projects. Um, just recently talked to our consultant about our health insurance. Uh, we will be looking at an increase in our health insurance premiums. We may have to adjust our plan somewhat. Uh, not sure of an exact percentage at this time, but we're probably looking at high single digits, maybe up to even possibly up to 10% an increase in our health insurance. Um, as we have in the past, our main objective in this year's budget is to maintain our current services, but obviously remain uh, conservative in how we, uh, how we work at, uh, throughout our budget. Um, we'd like to get some feedback from you as we enter that process um, to understand your priorities uh, so that as we move forward, we can be um, you know, prepared to present a budget to you that uh, you all would some feedback, I appreciate that. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 Around hundred thousand dollars. That that has nothing to do with any other additional increase that we might have in uh, premiums. Uh, this is just on top of that would be an additional hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Oh.
one is the reason I asked you to see the increase um, and, and look like what we're going to need additional monies for the budget. Uh, just looking at the possibility of new revenue from the projects that, that we have been fortunate enough to secure in the county in the last three or four years. Um, that's going to provide us some additional income. There's no question about that. Um, the real question is going to be if it's going to provide enough income to offset what our increase in the budget figures are going to be at this, at this time. I sort of doubt, to be quite honest with you, in the next year. I think it is going to, it is going to be a value and assistance, but it's going to be in the three plus to four million dollar range. trees in that place. One is funding uh, a chamber and the second is uh, funding and economic development uh, partnership and how the commissioners get into those two equations. We're going to have to make some decisions. Uh, also, I'd like to mention that you know we have been very aggressive in uh, the county has in sending packages for uh, these economic development projects. We were meeting uh, with, well, last week we were meeting with, uh, we refer to it sometimes as uh, the executive round table. It's really a lot of the general managers and so forth, branch managers from around the county had to attend a fabulous job pulling together uh, branch managers along with uh, our legislative officials. I was very interested in talking to one of those folks afterwards, and uh, we got to talking about um, incentives and, and, and where it fit into the equation, and if, if the state went another way, another, if you had another option concerning incentives, because there's a lot of things on the table being discussed right now, I don't think there's any real concrete proposal. What's going to be done? There's a lot of discussions. Plant manager from one of the larger projects said, uh, Point blank, we would not be here had it not been for incentive. Uh, I think it's, it's really way of 
lot of legislative leadership in Raleigh as to how they really approach all this. They got a difficult decision. Uh, but I, from our county's perspective, our, our being very aggressive uh, has helped us to this point as Commissioner Hutchinson and County Manager Mills and I will review and I think prior to the meeting, uh, we are at least in a position where we have uh, some projects that are starting to produce revenue that we didn't have three years ago. And that's going to have a positive effect on the budget going forward. Uh, be careful and say that it's not going to be six or eight million dollars coming in. I'm not saying that. But at least it's going to be additional money coming in that's going to help offset some of the, the, the additional costs Jobs, and we have hopefully um, another project that is up. Keep your fingers crossed. Uh, be announced in the next couple of weeks. That also is blue collar, a lot of jobs, uh, which could possibly lead to another company following it, blue collar with additional jobs. So uh, it looks like last year we had a real nice announcement with Alvo. Possible that this one could happen in January. So hopefully, start out 2013 uh, in a positive manner. Uh, I think uh, Commissioner Hutchins and I have talked a long time about uh, building uh, some economic development uh, reserves that would help with projects. Uh, the county manager will bring up something involving small business in a, in a moment, but I think part of Discussion that he and I need to have privately to bring back to you for your consideration is uh, a figure or a percent that he feels some degree of comfort in. Uh, Commissioner Hutchins and I, we feel a whole lot more comfortable with a higher percent than he feels right now, which is understandable. But, but uh, we, we, we definitely need to address building an economic development reserve fund, and one of the ways that we can do it is a percent of some of these new projects that uh, that we've been fortunate enough to see some revenue increase in. But all of this could not be possible without the support of all of y'all in some form or fashion. Most, most of you've been involved in all these decisions along the line in some way. And it would not have happened if you not been uh, in total support. And I hope that our the populace will understand that these things are going to benefit us. Uh, they're not going to benefit us as much as we had hoped in the snap of a finger. But going forward over a period of 12, 15 years, they're going to benefit us. And at least we're not facing the problem that some of our tier one counties are facing the property real budget deficits there right now. Just a comment is something that uh, Eddie and I talked about back when I was on EDC that you know anything we do at the city is funding comes out of general fund fund balance and we get to the point now that if we just started five years ago we've been ahead but now we're gonna play catch up. Us moving to a tier two county can't help us and we've got to hurt us, but we've really got to be aggressive in what we do, especially get some funds set aside because if we don't have something Set aside, just like we keep talking about our fund balance is dropping, we could get to a critical point. Even though I know our county manager is looking at revenue to support the budget, we've got to have revenue to support economic development because if it don't continue to grow, then our funds are not going to grow. So it's something that uh, we've been talking about, I know, the last five years, but it's something that we need to get serious about and set up some sort of system to fund it. Take a while to do it because even if you take a, a slow
like percent of what was weighing in now is not that much, but still again, over a period of a few years, and then at the end of these things, back on something, you know, to continue the next year, then it can make a big difference. Any other comments? Or you can call our
pay the way we currently work now, they have to pay their taxes first. Uh -huh. Once they have to pay their taxes, then the new investment we would incentivize them for the grant back of the new investment. And I don't get right down to the do you have a job. Well, you, well, you, you can, can you can pick it. I, I put both uh, because that's you know, it depends on where, where your focus wants to be. If your focus wants to, you want your focus to be on investment or job creation, then we can we can get rid of jobs entirely. Now, what my vote is I'm trying to say is I can only benefit from building structures, and I don't get them because it's just a big old disaster. So you can either grow the county growth. in growth county any way we can cut the incentives for them to stay and settle here. One thing the other is on job creation, and uh, we always get called back on the construction. Through uh, one of our neighboring counties, or actually part of neighboring counties, uh, uh, the other day, and uh, was thinking about it. They, they've got a sign out when you, when you drive through their counties. It's, I can't remember the name of it, Entrepreneurial um, County, or is it Federally Federal Recognized Entrepreneurial County, I think. I believe it's Polk County. Uh, and, you know, as a business owner, I've owned several businesses. Be honest, I've never had a hundred thousand dollars when I started this business to, to start with. So, I think one of the things that we could do, I would like to see is this is a great, a, a, a great, this would be a great tool for our county. Um, I'm not saying throw money at, at every entrepreneur that's out there or, or trying to trying to get them to trying to give tax rebates, even, but we're looking at incentives. If there's if there is a program that's out there for an entrepreneurial County or some guidelines that we can look at where we can be more friendly to these startup businesses, people that want to start a business. Um, I mean, I could probably sit here and name 10, 10 people I know that have started businesses recently, and some of those people that have hired somebody to work for them. Uh, there's an RV dealership that a guy lives just right down the road. He doesn't have a commercial building, but he's hired well, he, two, but he's he hired two, he can qualify for the people. He's hired two people to work for him. Uh, yeah, he can. He can so I mean those those I I'd like to see us look at some of the this is great, but it's not start to pick off all of them. Just come on. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But I mean they don't want to make it so cumbersome all of those different columns in there either. Not not asking for that's why I'm saying not not looking at, at, at even uh, giving them a, a incentive for their, their taxes. But if there's something we can do to help entrepreneurs uh, because those people come off of that, they come out of that. I mean, we have a lot of great 
I'd like to look at what the what the guidelines are for this entrepreneurial uh, account. I believe it's up county, and if we can see what it takes to, to be considered friendly to entrepreneurs, and maybe look at that as well. This is, I think this is a good thing. This I like. This, I like this up here. Um, but if we can look and see what we can do, because there's, I mean, I, there's people that want to do like asbestos abatement and different type businesses around RV dealerships. Service garages. A lot of those guys start up, and they don't. You know, they can't sink. You know, maybe ten thousand dollars in business, and that's a stretch for a lot of them. So, if there's something we can do to help them out, that one person put them, put them back to work, and even if it's working for themselves, that helps our unemployment rate just as much. Well, this is work in progress. It's just trying to be good, but we see all the interest you want to be.
CBG and some of those other grants are a little more complicated because there's more follow-up with those grants and more work. Um, some of the other grants, some of the Texas State grants are probably $15,000. But there's a lot of work, not just a matter of writing the grant itself, there's, there's multi-year follow-up you know, and ensuring that they're meeting continuing to meet the guidelines for multiple years. What, what started this conversation was um, I was in a meeting with um, several of the uh, several members of the municipalities, either mayors or city councilmen, and they were having some challenges with um, ISOPUN and, and getting follow ups uh, with ISOPUN when they were you know, wanting to see if we would be willing to consider that's where this all came from. I really don't think that. Number of dollars to write a grant research grant, whether you get it or not, you pay that up 